Thanks very much. Um, so, this good that this is a lightning talk. I think this is more like a, a monologue, I'd say, a thought piece. Um, my name is Dave Anderson. I'm the Director of Technology for Liberty IT here in Belfast and Dublin. Um, I suppose for this talk, this is really just my opinion and perspective. My background, I've been in software development for about 20 years. Uh, background in telecommunications for about 10 years and then in, in sort of financial services for 10 years. So this really is, is I think it's quite an interesting um, topic. It's it's the, it's kind of forking off from Mark Anderson's uh, his software in the world, which came out sort of about uh, six or seven years ago. So I'm just going to go through the title forces, transformation, what was broken, how you can fix it, and then a couple of takeaways. Um, so my inspiration for this talk really was the title forces. It's a quick show of hands. Has anybody heard of this blog post came out? back in January by Delmar Tomlich Mogul. Has anyone read that or heard the talk? I would strongly recommend you read this blog or watch. He also did a, he did the, the blog post as preparation for an RCA talk. Uh, he's a, 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 a researcher for um, Securosis. And really he talks about the tidal forces that are affecting security with a lot of different factors in play, like the, the amount of endpoints that are starting to they appear, mobile phones and, and tablets. Um, the, the fact that the cloud has the back office and plus all the infrastructure going off the public cloud. So reading this blog it got me thinking as a long term <coughs> software developer I always had a funny relationship with security. For a long time it was it was kind of like it's something that you were caught. If you could get through the door without getting caught you were okay. But then about I'd say about maybe about eight years ago I was working in some e-commerce stuff and I thought I really got to look at this closely and, and kind of see what's going on here. And there was, there was a niggling thought in my mind, and it, it, it didn't really strike me until I, I read Rich Mogul's blog of what I was experiencing, so I'm really going to talk through that. So part of this, a really important part of this, is transformation. When you say the word transformation in a, a company perspective, people always think about, oh, it's this, it's a beautiful thing. It will all be as we are. We'll get ready for our transformation. Okay, then knuckle down, and it will, it'll, it'll happen, and then we'll evolve, and we'll, that's it all done. I, I don't really agree with that. I think it's a bit more like this. Um, this is Chief Brody from Jaws. So Chief Brody, he knew there was a shark. He needed to get Cooper from the Resource Institute, Quinn from his boat, all their money equipment. They get all prepped up. They're out, ready to do their job. And he sees the shark for the first time. And his reaction is, we're going to need a bigger boat. He's not preparing for a transformation. The transformation has just hit him. He's just realized, wow, this just happened. So to me, that's more what transformation is like. It kind of, it sort of sneaks up on you. For me, let's do this guy. This is um, Elvis Presley on the Ed Sullivan Show on the 9th of September, 1956. Before this, popular music was like easy listening, jazz, string, you sit down and tap your foot. This 82% of American households watch this on TV. 82%. This is the, this is the birth of rock and roll. Um, you notice all those guys in the background, they kind of look normal, they're wearing suits, they're, they're doing kind of doo-wop, but Elvis has got this kind of weird hip thing going on. I mean, that, if you see what started in music, that was just an explosion that no one could predict. But anyway, back to, back to software. Yesteryear, when we drew architecture diagrams, they usually look like this. This is a sort of, it fits in your head diagram. And you've got a couple of layers there, you've got your UI, your service, maybe a couple of gateways out the databases or legacy, a couple of NFRs down, down the um, right hand side there, security, whatever, um, operations. It, it kind of fits in your head. And I remember designing these systems, drawing these diagrams. <coughs> but then, like I say, about seven years ago, I was working on a system, and it was a bit more like this. And I started getting to the point, I, I can't visualize the system I'm designing a server architect, there's just there's too many things. So you start finding yourself researching visualization, graph libraries, D3, sunbursts, whatever. You start doing these weird things and as an engineer you eventually get somewhere and think that makes sense. Then you show it to your manager and he goes, what are you doing? I don't even understand this, this is crazy. And it's not because you've took a funny turn, it's the systems are ex way more complex. This is the microservice system for Halo, showing some dependencies. That looks complicated. Then there's the famous uh, Netflix Death Star. This is a visualization of the Netflix system. So 
good luck to you if you want to try and do a threat model on that. I mean, that's the kind of complexity you're dealing with. And that's, I think that's about three or four years old. So what's this got to do with transformation? And, you know, where we're currently at. One of the things you might say, well, we've got a venting. A venting is just going through the roof, right? If you think about stuff like Kinesis or Firehose in AWS, there's a huge volume of events going through the system. So you can say, I'll, I'll monitor the events. It, there's big numbers coming through some of these systems. The decision points. Back when we used to release once a year, it was quite easy. Developer says, yep, I built it. Tester, yep, it works. Business analyst, yes, it's what I want. Let's release it. It was like six, six conversations there between those three people. If you're releasing once a day, 10 times a day, every 11 seconds, your amount of decision points has gone through the roof. You don't have time to stop and analyze. There's a constant flow of software. The attack factors have changed. You know, what you could say, oh, we're all set in production. Okay, let's attack the pipeline, your CI CD pipeline. Let's go back to the source. So there's new attack vectors. And then once you think you've got everything sorted with your nice cloud environment, you've got your events in a nice sim or something, you've got your continuous delivery, you've hardened your pipeline, some developer is going to Google the Simian Army and release the Chaos Monkey, this great concept from Netflix called anti fragility, in the sense that our system's so complicated. Let's just throw in some chaos and see what happens. That's the only way to test it because it, it, it's just it, it's far too big to sit and actually do proper analysis on. So now this is like I think the open source this in around 2011. So this in itself is seven years. So we talk about transformation. There, there's a lot of things in the new world that are vastly different from the old world. So I know what you're probably thinking. He's going to tell me I need to be a developer, or he's going to tell me I need to write code. Great! <laughs> <laughs> you know, is software is eating security? That, that, that's the answer. Well, I don't think so. But here's Elvis in about 1972 in Vegas. Um, you know, he's, he can't play the guitar, but he's pretending. He can't really dance, but he's pretending. But he has evolved to where rock and roll has got to. So you have to just evolve with your skill set. So let's actually step back and think about what was actually broken. Um, you should probably think about, we still have our tools. There's a low, and this isn't really a, 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 a shot at vendors. So we have lots of tools, we can do lots of stuff. If you read that Tidal Forces blog post, there's three points that Rich Mogul talks about, and they're, they're very deep points. Endpoints are different and more secure. The amount of mobile phones and tablets shift has shipped has far exceeded laptops and PCs, by far. So if you've got Android or iOS, they're, they're probably sandboxed, they're more secure, there's less access. So the attack vector has narrowed and there's many, many more devices. The back office has gone to the cloud. Your email server is likely now as a SaaS, so you don't have to really protect that hardware on-prem. So a lot of that sort of vendor products that you would buy and install, you know, using the SaaS. So there's less servers as a company. And then your infrastructure has also gone to the cloud. If you've got developers who are excited by the, the, the new sort of um, technical advances, you're going to want to do stuff on the big cloud vendors. So guys are pushing stuff out. So it's zero touch. You can't scan anything. You can't monitor anything. You can use different approaches. So a lot of the old techniques we would have relied on don't really apply anymore. So that's what more else was wrong. Communication was always terrible between development and security. There was always this, excuse me guys, what are you doing? It's like, don't worry about it, it works. Yeah, it might work, but it's not secure. So there's always a siloed between, I'm going to say, different departments. It's horrendous between, let's even widen it out, between business, development, security, operations, uh, test. We're always very siloed traditionally. That, that has got to come together. Shift left. I'm not a fan of shift left. It's a very easy thing to say that, well, let's just shift it all left and let the developer do it all. Developers are not magic. They just want to build stuff and get it out the door. That's me speaking as a developer. I, I don't think shift left is the answer because you need all those things, but they just need to work together. So I prefer the term include left because you've got to move left of, of, of the work, not really shift all the work left. And then people say, well, we need a central team, a secret team to do everything and they'll swoop in and fix it all. I'm not knocking blue teams or red teams. They're, I think they're very important, but you have to talk to the development team because you're working in isolation then I can tell you from developer, you're going to think, well, those guys have got that. I don't need to worry about it. Brilliant. And again, with the decision points, 
a central team cannot keep up. And finally, why there are rotten about stuff, cloud native. Um, you see some companies have gone to the cloud where they've lifted and shifted something off. You may be running on the cloud, but unless you're properly leveraging the platform and behaving differently, you're not really cloud native. And this is going to keep evolving. So I think having something just physically running in the public cloud isn't really cloud native. So you know, if you're a company maybe went to the cloud a couple of years ago, you think that's just all set. I think there's a lot more to do there. So we all have a hack. You know, you can get into a false sense of security saying, well, we've got some stuff there, you know, we're in the new world. This is Elvis 1966. He's wearing another suit. He thinks he's cool to the kids. But there's no kids watching him. It's all the guys who are watching him in 1956, 10 years later, 10 years older. So he's, per he's pretending like a rocker, but he's not really changed. He's still singing the same old songs from the 50s. This was his TV special comeback. So you can kind of change a wee bit now, I'd say, but you've got to change how you actually do your job. So how can we fix it? First question I'd say is ask why. Why are you doing what you're doing? You know, if you're building a system, why are you building that? Who is it for? What's the outcome? What's the destination? If you're a security professional, why are you doing your job? Are you just filling in mindless audit reports and analyzing endless findings? You gotta get right back to the root of the problem. So Richard Feynman here was a great proponent of asking why, why, why. So drill down, get back into the core of your profession. Think what are you good at? What's your core competency or capability? Your security, your development, you're, you're, you're a breaker or a builder. But think about that, think about how that skill set evolves to the new world, because it does evolve. Your tools may not, but your skill set will absolutely evolve. So be very clear what you're good at and find out what the advancements are in that field. This is a favorite one of mine. You hear a lot of companies now will, will say, we're not an X company, we're a technology company who sell X. I think every company has said this, and we are now transformed to be a digital company. Um, to me, a digital company does not have an IT department, does not have a security department, does not have a test department. It's one team. There's one team with all the, all the players sitting, building that product. So you don't go to security, security are already engaged. So, that, so the, all the best teams work as a team. So my advice would be to join that team. So in closing, a couple of principles. What do we walk away with? Um, secure development. I'm a big fan of secure development and have been so for many years. I believe developers are your first line of defense. As uncomfortable as that makes us feel, I believe it's true. So a couple of principles that, that, that we use in some of my teams. Be a champion. Encourage your developers to be a security champion. Champion the cause, talk about it, remind the team. Educate your team. There's many different brilliant tools and, and, and there's a lot of stuff here at the event today. So, you know, give the team the information they need. Make them think differently. Uh, be aware of your blind spots. Architectures are so complex today, there's different blind spots. You may use a certain tool that maybe negates cross-site scripting or SQL injection or whatever cross-site press forgery. So, threat model with your team. Have your team figure out what the vulnerabilities are. And then when you figure out a mitigation, actually have the team test it with developer security testing. Have them have security test cases in with their functional test cases. What we do is when we have a vulnerability, we treat it like a bug, it's a defect. It's on the defect log like anything else. I, I find if you tell a developer there's a security vulnerability in your release, they go, okay. If you say there's a defect, they're going to fix it. So it's a different way of thinking about defects. A colleague of mine, if you're going to public cloud, uh, Brian Riley, he's got, I think these are three very cool principles for like a hardened cloud architecture. Uh, immutable architecture. If everything generated, automated, if something is wrong, blow it away, reprovision it. So immutable architecture is a very important principle. Second, event-driven security, self-healing infrastructure. You only put traps and analysis on to actually do the work for you in a zero-touch environment. And then management of the blast radius. Keep your um, separation down. If someone actually gets into your environment, make sure it's a small attack radius. Um, and we're everything is software now, so this is automated and coded all the way through. Also, security by design. AWS brought this out about, I think, about two years ago or a year and a half ago. It's a really nice approach to public cloud security. I would strongly encourage anyone to read that white paper. It's um, it's just one of the main principles. It's just automate everything. 
and there's a really nice framework to how you do that. And then finally, I'd say what's your focus? If you're building a system, or protecting a system, I think you need to partner at design time. I'm a huge fan of threat modeling, so even as we go through this transformation, you always need to sit down and think about what are we actually building. And what I would encourage any team to do is sit down as a team and figure that out. The threat model is a great mechanism to sort of encourage that collaborative discussion. It's not a process, it's just sitting down that meeting of minds. If you've got very agile teams who are doing practice like a team's delivery, you need to take people out of their environment and have the conversation about how do we secure this feature or this release or whatever we're building. So finally, with my Elvis strength, um, Elvis kicked off a transformation back in 1956, which has evolved beyond, way beyond anything you've ever seen. Today, his core competency is singing a song, if you think about it. So today, there's people with the, he's got Elvis with the, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. It's completely evolved what that is. Completely different from 1956, but still delivering the same experience, which is a song being sung in a, a song being sung in a very different environment. So that's why I'd encourage you to think about your core skill, and as organizations, enterprises, the industry goes through transformation, bring that skill through and reapply it. So that's me. Um, been around for a few minutes, so if there's any questions, I wouldn't go too fast. No, perfect. Thank you very much. So Dave, uh, on your development slide, which I love by the way, uh, you're talking about one of the key things in there is educate your team. Yes. Uh, and I think for security work, for threat modeling sessions, for instance, uh, you know, my career, one of the biggest challenges has been exactly that, yeah. educate your team. And today, there is boundless resources, so you can find 101 courses on how to begin using AngularJS, but how to find courses and, and, uh, and kind of resources really to educate your team. Is, has always been such a massive monumental challenge. Have you got any tips on how that might be improved? I find, well, I think we, we went the formal way early on. I've done a lot of formal courses, which are really important, but a course, a class, is always point in time. You know, it's good to get, get, get immersed in it, and then you have material that people can self-discover. But what we found really successful was um, events like Security Shepherd, which is having, having almost like events within the company to just to get the expectation raised. So I think that was, because you don't want people almost experimenting with your live production stuff. You want people experimenting in a safe environment. So I think having those both self-led, formal class, and also having mentors to go to, like a good collaborative network, the security champions, you can go and talk to that guy. So having that all laid out and very clear that that's there, and then drive the engagement through things like Security Shepherd, we, we find that has worked well. I think the normal way of just rolling out a class is a bit tough. Okay, you that. Okay. Any further questions? Anyone else? Okay. Well done, you're off. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks.